One, two, three, that's the A! So, working tonight a little bit on positional control for our takedowns. So, it's all really good knowing a bunch of takedown moves, but if I can't get the right grips and I'm not controlling the right space, I'm not going to be able to make them work. So, we looked at the simple situation. So, if it's match to me foot forwards and I get this grip, okay? He could take a grip on me by going to the outside or by coming underneath. He could go over or under this arm, okay? And either of those could be correct. So if he's got that grip on me, I could go over or I could come under. What's important is how I dominate the space. So if I want to go to the inside, I've got to dominate the inside space. So I'm going under his arm, here, I've dominated the inside. If I go to the over the top, I can still dominate the inside from going over the top. So it's very important how I dominate space. The same thing, I've got my grips here, when we grip up on the other side. If I just take a grip on the outside of his sleeve, this isn't very strong, it's not very useful to me. I can't really control where this arm goes. <clears throat> he gets a good grip on me, and I just grip here. I've got no real control of the movement. If I grip up here underneath, I can now dominate, because I could dominate to the inside. Same on the sleeve. If I'm coming here, I'm going to dominate the inside grip. If I'm on the outside here, this isn't really doing anything. I've got to make it a dominant grip. So working to always make sure that I'm going for a dominant position is incredibly important. But with that basic principle in mind, we looked at this situation where he is reaching all the way over and dominating me here, coming to the inside, he's dominated this control point. We're working in the mid-range right now. To truly get a throw going, I want to get inside and get hip to hip. So I'm going to use this opportunity to break this grip and re-grip around his waist. But if I just let him dominate that position, I'm not going to get anything going. He's heavy across me. He's got me back over my hips. And he's in a very good position to bring me onto my, his hip and throw me. So when I come from here and I go in, my shoulder is coming up underneath here and dominant. The second thing that I want to think about is this foot. If I have my toes turned towards him, if he steps over with an osotogari, look at the angle he's coming across my knee. He's folding me over the side of my knee. That's going to rip the ligaments of my knee. He will get his throw, I will go to hospital. I don't want that. My toe going to the outside, go for that same asotto. He can't dominate my knee because of the angles I'm using. Okay? So what we looked at from here is he's got a deep grip over the top, and he's dominated me. I go in and control here. Second thing I don't want to do I don't want to go searching too deep over here, because look what I'm doing. I'm loading myself on his hip. It's very easy for him to bring me and throw me. I don't want that. So I'll take a sleeve here, or I'll take his gi here. I'm not going to go reaching all the way across here. I'm here. I've dominated the inside. I've got whatever grips. It's very easy for me here to just hip into him and lift, place him down on the ground. So that was our first throw. Just hip in and take it backwards with a lateral drop. Same situation, but all the way up. He's dominated my grip. I go through. I dominate this grip here. My other option is to step through. So to step through from here, I'm going to step in front, bring my hips in, lift, and throw. Of course, I can high, I can plop. There's a lot of different options there. The basic concept is making sure I'm dominating grips, okay? On the ground. 
I want you to look at positional dominance and creating pressure. So as I explained to the class tonight, every step should suck to be here. And each one sucks a little bit more. If at any point it stops sucking to be here, he starts thinking about escaping. I don't want him to think about escaping. I want him to think about submitting, giving up. So, my first position, side map. I'm heavy into him. I've turned him towards me. I've got pressure into him. My legs aren't lying on the ground. I'm up on my toes, I'm driving, I'm creating pressure. It sucks to be him. I want to switch. Bring my elbow back. Turn my hips. Drive, drive. This arm's right up across his face. My butt is hardly on the ground. My weight is still crushing him. I switch and I stare him. This arm is under his arm, keeping this arm up. My hips go heavy. It still sucks to be him. I'm right in his solar plexus. I'm gonna swim under the other arm. I'm gonna use my arms to bring across. Crossing his arms. Still sucks to be him. I slide my knees high. Still sucks to be him. At this point, he is deciding which arm do I defend, right? Which arm do I want to defend? That's his decision. He can't defend both. He's settled on this one. Okay. This hand locks this wrist. At this point, this one's locked in. He can't come back and save this one. My hand goes to his elbow. I use this pressure to allow me to pivot. I'm crushing, oh sorry, poking his eye. Crushing between my heel and my knee. My weight is in my thigh across his chest. Okay, my hand is still locking this in. This hand is gonna swim across to my own shin. At this point, look, I'm wrist to wrist with him. My weight is in his chest. He would kind of like me to get off right now. I'm going to lean to this side. I get even heavier. I'm hugging this arm to my chest and I bring my knees up together. I can finish this arm by here. Yeah? I can slide off here, but what happens? The second I slide off here, the weight's gone off his chest. He starts thinking about escaping. I've probably still got this arm if I'm tight. But why do I sit off? Why not? Finish this arm by here. He's still worrying about the pressure on his chest, and now his arm's extended. Why drop off to the side? Why would I want to take the pressure off him? <laughs> so that was the conversation tonight, and our focus probably for the next couple of weeks is on pressure jujitsu. If I keep the pressure on him, he doesn't have a moment to think about his next plan. I am controlling him constantly keeping stuff twisted across. Whatever's outside, I turn it to the inside. Pushing heads across, pushing arms across, locks people in position. Russ is a lot stronger than me, I've said this a few times, Russ is a lot stronger than me. So if I go strength for strength with him, I'm going to lose. So I have to find an option where all my weights are across this arm, now I can dominate this arm, because it's all of my body against this arm. If I go arm to arm, if I arm wrestle him, I'm going to lose. That's a fair fight. <laughs> I don't want a fair fight with someone that's stronger than me. I'll lose it. I've got to make it an unfair fight by looking for a way to use my skeleton, use my entire body to dominate and use his musculature against him. Lock him into bad positions. So this armbar is a perfect example of that. At no point from me starting inside now through to him tapping has the pressure gone off him. If the pressure goes off him at any point, that's when he's going to explode and look for his escape. So that's what we've been working on, that's what we're going to continue to work on. The beautiful thing about training like this, it's uncomfortable, but nobody should get injured. Because you're slow and controlled, there's no fast jerky movements. Because there's no fast jerky movements. As long as you know when you're beat and you tap, it should be very low risk of anyone getting injured. So it's a tough way to train. You go home feeling crushed, you're gonna feel it tomorrow. Your muscles are gonna feel it tomorrow. Both people that are trained like this, but neither person's gonna be having to ice themselves because of injuries.
That's how we like to train. Oh, Enjoy. Yes.